morning? Yeah. All right. yeah. Are you all ready for some good preaching this morning? Yeah. All right. As you see, Ronnie, he's got a couple of special guests up here. He's going to be doing some things this morning, and uh, I'll wait and let them tell the story. Uh, but what a blessing that is, and what a ministry it has been for so many years. And these guys have kind of picked it up and continued on, but I'll be quiet. And, uh, let Brother Ronnie and him get started here. So we all uh, get your Bibles out, get ready, shout, amen. He might get to preach for about an hour. What do you think? All right. And he just get warmed up with that at Hager Hill. He gets up and goes, well, I've got a nine-point message this morning. You hear the old church go, ah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but anyway, all right. We have Brother Mark and Mark. What's your wife? Celeste. And uh, we're glad to have them today. Go These to folks 30. are missionaries. They go out to the local school. And 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 stuff. The Lord Jesus Christ. About 4 and they, about the <laughs> they took over for two ladies. Now, I'm not going to tell you much about these ladies, but I'm going to let Brother Mark tell you. He knows more about them than I do. He is closely affiliated with them. I think the, these great ladies, right these instruments that we, you see back here, uh, the saw that Brother Mark's going to play, and the accordion that he's going to play for you later on, uh, was used by these two ladies in their ministry. They went, when I was a little boy, never will forget it, uh, just uh, went to a one room school, the Mountain Hurricane Branch, that Boone's Camp, and those ladies would come into that one room school and they'd set up that flannel board and they'd tell us the story of Jesus. Amen. And then they would sing. And Miss Crumb had the prettiest smile of anybody I've ever seen. That lady always smiled. She had joy in her heart. And I remember as a little boy, I used to think, what's that lady so happy about? <laughs> Amen. Boy, I know now. She had, she had joy inside and it just bubbled out in her face. Amen. But I, I want to introduce these folks to you and uh, make them welcome to the breaks. Brother Mark, his, his wife's been coming uh, for many years. And uh, last year, the Lord just impressed upon me to ask him to come and make this presentation. I believe you all are going to enjoy it. I know I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. So I'm going to get out of the way. Welcome, Brother Mark and Celeste. Amen. To the break. Thank you. If you were to go to uh, Porter Elementary School and walk into the library there and look on the wall, you'd see two ladies' pictures. One's Miss Lola Preston and the other one is Miss Alice Crumb. And those two ladies, uh, and they had also had two, uh, two other co-workers too, Miss Alice Shepard and Miss Sophia Van Horn. Those four ladies were missionaries to the schools in Johnson County. They did that for like over 60 years, okay? And right before they passed away, they asked Celeste and I if we would come and take Johnson County on as one of our counties. We go to nine different counties of schools uh, in and around Knott County. And they asked us if... Praise the Lord, that's right. That's definitely his, his miracle that he's keeping that door open. But right before they died, they said, Mark, would you take this saw and take this auto harp and this uh, accordion and play it in the schools uh, like we've been doing for 60 years or so. Let me tell you a little bit about this. Uh, this is a 36-string auto harp. Miss Crumb played this in the schools. It's a very beautiful instrument. Play about three chords on it, baby. Let me hear it. Sounds like heavenly music to me. I like it. All right. And this saw, this is the original saw that she used to play. Let me tell you a little bit about this. Her daddy bought this saw for her in 1934. Okay. And it was used back then. 1934, he gave $7 for it. He bought it uh, down in Florida, Orlando, Florida, by the man by the name of Howard Lindsay. Okay. And he told Miss Crumb, said, if you'll take and learn how to play it, I... So she, um, she learned how to play it, and she used it for, like I said, at least 60 years in the schools there. And right before she died, she asked me if I would learn to play it and use it in the schools. Now, I don't play it as well as she does. I'll admit that. But uh, we're going to play a song for you. Uh, uh, we'll, let's play the, the Baptist National Anthem. Do you all know what the Baptist National Anthem is? Amen. Amazing Grace. That's right. Okay. <laughs> we'll play a little bit of Amazing Grace for you just so you can hear what it sounds like. And it's kind of eerie. And uh, I have to tune every single note on this thing as I play it. Because there's no presetting it. You, you, you bend it like this. And, and that's how you play it. Okay? So you get it started. Everybody. Give me three notes to get me started on. We'll play Amazing Grace. A couple verses over here.
hang on just a minute. I might, I might have to move this. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was going to be in my way. Uh, pretty for a piece. I got to go a mink stall. You, you know what a mink stall is? Pretty for a piece. <laughs> All right, that'll work. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know it was going to be in my way. Right, start me over, baby, if you don't mind. We'll just do one verse today. Three notes. school schedule to do, different schools, uh, it's probably, so pray for us about that, okay, that the Lord keep that door open and give us safety to travel a lot of miles. Uh, last year, praise his name, I went to 140 different schools. So, so if anybody tries to tell you God's not still working miracles, buddy, you can say you're wrong, because he's, he's definitely, he's definitely uh, when you can go into the schools and share Jesus and the gospel and how to be saved and go to heaven. Forty-some thousand kids, that's definitely a miracle, right? Amen. So praise his name, Lord. Amen. 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 So you preachers that have got up in front of a crowd and, and preached that message for the first time, pray for me. Amen, because I need your prayer. So open your Bibles, if you will, to Hebrews chapter 12, and we're going to endeavor this morning by the mercy of God to do the best we can to preach the Word of God. So if you're there with me, let's begin our reading in verse 3. And I'm going to read down through verse 15. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. For ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastising of the Lord, Amen. nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son that he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with, you, dealeth with you as with a son, as with sons. For what son 
is he whom the Father chasteneth not. If ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we have given them reverence. Shall we not much rather be subject unto the Father of spirits and life? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Amen. Without no man shall see God, by the way. Now, no chastising for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands that hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet. Least that which is lame be turned out of the way. But let it rather be healed. Boy, that's, a, that's one right there. I can preach that. That's not mine today, but it may be my next one. Amen. Then follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, and this is where my text is coming from, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Will you pray with me? Father in heaven, Lord, as we come to you this morning, we thank you for this great gathering. Thanking you, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you circumvented the storm. And today, Heavenly Father, we stand here ready to deliver the message, Lord, that we believe you've laid upon our heart. And now, God, we just ask you, Lord God, that you would take us as your instrument today. Heavenly Father, God, that you would hide us in the shadow of your hand. God, Father, that the Word of God may have free course and that every heart today, Heavenly Father, would be uplifted by the Word of life. Heavenly Father, we pray today, Lord, that Your will and way will be done in all things. Most of all, Father, that someone here today lost will be saved. We ask it in Jesus' name. And all the believing and agreed said, Amen. 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 I want to talk about the root of bitterness. Amen. The root of bitterness. The Bible said here in the verse that I read there in verse 15, gave a warning. The, the, the writer here had given us a lecture on chastisement, and none of us like chastisement. But let me tell you something. When we are chastened of the Lord, we should respond to it with joy. Amen. Amen. Amen? Because if God is dealing with you by chastisement, that means God is dealing with you as a son. Amen. If there is no chastisement, my beloved, you're, no, you're not a son of God. And so I'm glad that whenever the Father takes me to the woodshed and He says, now Ronnie, you know you did it. And this is what you're going to get. Amen. And whenever my beloved, He begins to take that long piece of wood and begins to spank my behind, I say, thank God. It may be bitter for a while, but I say, thank God. He loves me. Amen. I remember my daddy of the flesh. He only gave me three uh, corporal punishments in all my life. But I've got every one of them engraved in my memory. Amen. I know when he took me to the woodshed, he took me there. Amen. And I remember it very vividly. Now my mother was the disciplinarian in our home and I can't even remember how many times she took me to the woodshed. But every time my beloved, it was for my benefit I'm sure. And so today I want to talk about something that if we're not careful as Christians, we can let a root of bitterness begin to grow up in our hearts. And if that root of bitterness begins to grow, the Bible says here that it will spring up, it will first of all trouble you. Amen? Amen. Many people today are troubled by a root of bitterness. Many people are, are bothered and hindered and held back and never able to come to what God would have them to do simply because deep-seated down inside, my beloved, there is a root of bitterness, something that they have held on to, something that is ingrained in them. If you, I, I got to thinking, I was sitting on the patio out back this morning, I was looking down at those tall trees like these on this mountainside, and I looked at all that you can see standing so proudly and majestically above the ground, and then I got to thinking about that root, and I said, you know, if it wasn't for the root system of those trees, then you'd never see the glory of those trees. If what's under the ground, is more important than what's above the ground. Uh, my beloved, what you're built upon today is more important uh, than what you're building. Uh, amen. I'm glad Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he said, I as a wise master builder have laid a foundation and another man buildeth thereon. Uh, I'm glad, brother, that foundation that we're all building upon today is the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, he died on Calvary uh, for our sin. Uh, and He rose again. Thank God on the third day. Uh, Bless God forevermore. And then He ascended back to the Father. 
And the Bible said he gave gifts unto men. I'm glad today, my beloved, I've received a gift from God. He gave me life and that life for abundantly. Thank God forevermore. I'm glad today that I'm alive in Christ Jesus simply because he died in my place. Hey, listen. B.R. Lakin said one time, if you ever heard that I died, don't you believe it? I'm just moving out of here for repair. I'm never going to die. I'm living forever because I've been born of life. Thank God that there's no death dwelling in me today. He gave me a gift and that gift is life. He said, as I live, do y'all believe he's alive? Amen. He said, as I live, ye shall live also. Give God some praise. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I gotta get started. Amen. I don't know how long this is gonna take, but today I want to talk about a root of bitterness. Now, a root is something that, first of all, is deep seated and it's multifaceted. In other words, that means that it, it goes in many different directions. A good root system is a root system that goes deep into the ground and then spreads out and, and it goes out in many different directions. The more directions that the root goes out into, the more branches that it has, the better it's able to supply the food and the nourishments that the tree or the plant needs to grow. And so a root is something that is deep-seated. Amen? It's hard to get to. How many ever tried to dig a tree stump up? Fun, isn't it? That's why, they make, that's why these guys that remove tree stumps make that big money. Amen. Somebody said, my goodness, I called this guy to come and remove a stump, and he wanted all this big money. I said, did you ever try to dig one out? Get you a matic and a shovel and go out there and go after him. You'll find out that after a while, you'll be ringing the phone and saying, hey, brother, can you get over here with that machine? Amen. Listen, my beloved, roots are hard to get out of the ground. They, they run deep, and they're difficult, and they're hard to remove. And that's why once a root of bitterness springs up in a Christian heart, it begins to do things to us. Amen. It begins to affect us. It begins to harm us because it's so hard to get to. It's so hard to find that thing. It's deep-seated in the ground and it's causing us many different problems. I want to deal with three this morning by the grace of God. First of all, there's a foundational problem. If you have a root of bitterness today, if you've got unforgiveness in your heart, somebody did something to you, and you've never gotten over it. Now, I don't, nobody's going to amen this, and I'm not even expecting it. Amen? But if somebody did something to you 20 years ago, and you've still got that root of bitterness in your heart, you've never let it go, you know what? It's still there. You've got a foundational problem, my beloved friend. Amen? And I'm not here to hurt anybody's feelings, but I believe today that we need to get free. I just closed out a sermon series at Hager Hill. I preached the first one up at uh, Brother Jim's church up at Marion. Thank God. And what a mess, what a time we had up there in that camp meeting. It's wonderful, Brother Jim. Got a great church up there, Marion Enterprise Baptist Church. Recommended to you if you're ever in that part of the country. Amen? But I closed out that sermon series on what doeth hinder me. And there's so many things that hinder us in our lives. But I believe one of the great things that hinder us and hold us back is that root of bitterness that gets down inside of us and it's like a cancer deep-seated down inside. And it's hard to get to whenever that tumor is there, that root is there, they've got to go down inside and they've got to find that thing and they've got to remove it else it will take over your very life. Amen. 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 And so many people, they have a root of bitterness. It's deep-seated. It's a foundational problem. I want to show you first. It deals with us in three ways of a foundational problem. First of all, it damages our stability. Amen? A foundation is what everything rests upon. I quoted the Scripture a while ago. The Apostle Paul said that I have laid a foundation. Amen? That foundation was the Word of God. Amen? Amen. He said, but every, uh, every man, woman, boy, or girl here, how many believers do we have? Would you raise your hand? If you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Let me tell you something. Your building today, my building and your building is different. We're not building the same way. We're not using the same material. We're all working toward the same goal, but we're all working on different buildings, amen. And Paul said, let every man take heed how he builds thereupon. But there can, if you have a foundational issue, and, and I've been in houses before. I do a little bit of carpenter work. And I've been in houses before. And people would say, can you fix this? And I look at that and I say, no. I can cosmetically make it better. And they say, what do you mean? 
I say, you've got a foundation problem. Nobody wants to hear that in this my house. Nobody wants to you want you to tell them that big crack went up the wall. That starts under the ground. I can I can fill it up and I can patch it up, but I can't fix it. Woo! I'm about to preach down here. I don't know if y'all it or not. Amen. But listen, I can patch it up. Many of us today have put a little plaster over it. We feel that we've caulked up the cracks. Amen. We painted over the issue, but you know what? The crack is still there because it started in the foundation. We've got a, a foundational issue. We, we've got a problem in the foundation, my beloved, and until that foundation is rooted out, dug up, and replaced, that crack will be there. I don't care how many times you paint over it. Went out to a big home. It's a, it's a mansion. I mean, this house is incredibly large. 75, I think 75,000, or 7,500 square feet, I'm sorry. Big house. Amen. And, and I, cracks in the ceiling. You know. They say, can you fix them? I say, I can cosmetically fix them. They say, what do you mean? I say, there's a problem. They say, what's the problem? I said, the problem's in the foundation. They didn't want to hear that. I said, I won't guarantee it. I said, I can patch it up. I can, I can fix it where it'll look good. I don't know how long it'll last. Come on. Come on. Woo! Come on. I don't know about you all, but I like that. Amen. How many of us today have painted over it? Oh, we've come to an altar and we've took a little stucco and we've filled it up. Amen? We've took a little fresh paint about every two or three weeks and we spread it over that. Then here comes the crack. Every time we see that brother or sister, it comes back. Mm. Lord help us. Bless him. Bless him. If any man endure the chastising of the Lord, he's blessed. Amen. If God's chastising you right now, you ought to be happy. Amen. I know this ain't easy. I never thought it would be. Amen. But I'm telling you today, in order for us to get where God wants us to be, we've got to root out that bad part. If you 